The silicones actually come from another company right down the street in Chatsworth on DeSoto. And the silicones come there. We get our product for uh, making Angel for Victoria's Secret, same as everybody gets their products from. Silicone is silicone, it comes from sand. And we make silicones either syrupy or spray, like the, mm. the shiners. And we do, you know, shiners. There's a million shiners out there. And it's just a silicone with a little bit of alcohol in it and perfume, so it smells good. You have to have the alcohol so you can, the perfume will blend in. Otherwise, your perfume will float, won't blend in the silicone. And that's all it is. It's very drying, pulls a lot of moisture out of the hair, so you use it, you add more, use it, add more, use it, add more. But it's really shiny. The same silicone we use for hair, we also use for shining shoes, shining cars, car polish, floor polish, bowling balls, you name it, countertops. It's just silicone. But we use it in the hair business because people want shiny hair. What product is um, not used in like Johnson Johnson, like the no tears that doesn't burn the baby's eyes? Johnson & Johnson uses T-Laurel sulfate, and they also use it at a very small percentage. Uh, and the reason is, is you have a very small product you're trying to wash. So you don't need a whole heck of a lot. I mean, you know, itty-bitty baby head, you know, you know, drop, 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 one, blah, 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 you know. I maybe use two fingers, I don't know. Um, you know, I think my wife actually took my son and did one of these routines to wash him. I, I personally like to take him out and hose him sometimes. I can't believe how dirty the kid got. But... Um, but no, that's all it is, and it's just a very small amount, something in the 3% range. So, so it's just a very small... So they just use less of it. Oh, less of it. And that's all we do is just like, you know, how much fat goes in a hamburger? Mm -hmm. How much the controversy was taco, is it Taco Bell or Del Taco or somebody on what percentages go? We just adjust just percentages to give it the flavor. And the more we adjust one way and more combinations of, of other ingredients, where we vary that recipe, so to speak, is how we create the products and we're trying to differentiate ourselves from other products currently out there. What would be the advantage in the Paul Mitchell brand to make more Paul Mitchell? I can't have three or four Paul Mitchell recipes out there. Paul Mitchell's got it. Unless you can do something that will give it a brand edge. A, a good story was one of my favorite ones because marketing seems like it's, it's, it's voodoo. <laughs> Years ago L'Oreal came to America. L'Oreal is a French company. L'Oreal brought to a, their version of hair color. L'Oreal hair color. The number one selling hair color, by the way, is L'Oreal. By the, about that time, Clairol was the number one American-made company having hair color. Little brown bottles, little metal caps, sold for about 79 cents at that time. L'Oreal came to America, went for about a buck 81, buck 85 somewhere, and nobody bought it. Well, they hired their first of the blonde spokesmodels that they had, and at that time it was Sybil Shepherd. I don't know if you mm -hmm. remember the actress. She was doing Moonlighting with Bruce Willis way back a long time ago. And she was America's sweetheart of the first, I think it's Heather Locklear is the current one. And you guys remember the tagline. She held that little hair bottle up and she says, L'Oreal costs a little more, but I'm worth it. Mm -hmm. Man, you ladies jumped on that stuff like there was no tomorrow. I mean, you were worth it. You are going to spend a buck more to buy the same exact product in the same exact bottle coming from France versus coming from Chicago or wherever we made it here and spend a buck more and to buy over Clairol. Explain that one to me. It's the same stuff. I mean, there was no formula difference. Clair hair color was hair color. And it was the same glass bottle, same size, only different color cap. I think they used the green instead of the red. I don't know. But all that, and it was, you know, Oval, looked identical, but you guys were worth it. Now we're worth it, they're worth it, he's worth it, she's worth it, <laughs> every other worth it in the world, and, that, and that's been a tagline that's made L'Oreal a fortune. To this day, L'Oreal dominates the hair color market. Clairol cannot get their market back. They do other things very well, but they cannot get hair color back. Um, think of it from a, your standpoint. If they raise the price, well, how dare they raise the price of that cheap product? I ain't going to buy it. We can't lower the price. It's already a cheap product. You're not buying it because the price is already cheaper. So you can't, what is the, what is the uh, management that Clairol is supposed to do with hair color except sell it to whoever they can get for whatever market share is left out there for them to have? It's a, it's a, a marketing question. Question in the back. Uh, what product would you, like, food and stuff would you recommend for defining curls on uh, do you want it curlier or uncurlier? Curlier. More defined curl. 
Well, I don't know that there's a shampoo as opposed to a technique that would make the uh, make that work for you, because shampoo is only supposed to clean. It's not really a curl definer. A lot of people have tried to make something that says something like that, but if you look at a shampoo and what it's supposed to do, it just removes dirt. Uh, adding stuff to it doesn't assist it in removing dirt, um, and adding a conditioner to it doesn't do anything other than make the shampoo work harder because the shampoo doesn't know that the conditioner isn't dirt. So, you know, the best thing to do would be finding a product that you could find as a conditioning agent to do more of the definition of, of the <coughs> color, which would be my opinion. But I don't know any shampoo that will do that, you know, by itself. What's a good conditioner for that? Oh, kiddo, there's a, that depends on how coarse, how long, how fine, if it's been chemically straightened, it's been relaxed in the past, um, or whatever. There's a thousand variations that you're going to have to understand as a cosmetologist in order to make that determination on when that client comes in. Because some people at that point, you know, may have, and I deal a lot, like say, with the studios. And you may have to have a client, you know, want to look more wavy, uh, go back to the 20s where finger waves are important. Some people are going to go straight, some people are going to go bone straight. Uh, I mean, it depends on the style that you're looking at for the person, just like an actor or actress, uh, that comes to your, your chair and then you decide what you want to do with their style or they decide what they want to do with the style. Because that's totally into uh, the product that you're going to decide you're going to use on them. So that's your determination on what you're trying to create as an artist. Because this is, a, like I say, it's an application of beauty now. used to be, in the old days, clean the hair and then sit under a crokinole machine for crying out loud. If you've ever seen one of those ugly machines, you know, then they electrocute you for a while. <laughs>